Welcome back to the couch here on Aurora Television and Face TV. Welcome back to our side studios. It's always a pleasure to welcome back my good friend Cara Walker, Fairy Cara Walker. Hello and welcome back to the couch. Hey, Fred, thank studio. you. Now today we're talking about something very controversial. Now I'm going to call it what it's officially called by the Mr. Colin Barnett. Thank it's you. called the Shark. Uh, is it mitigation strategy? Is that, am I got it sure, right? Sure, that's Mr. Collins' word. Sounds wonderful. I think but... officially they call it that. We know yep. it. A lot of people refer to it as shark culling. Yep. Um, we know that in theory that's what we all think is happening. And you've got a fantastic guest, Donna, in today to talk about that. I do. I have Donna Martin, who is an independent shark researcher. Thank you, Donna, for coming on the couch today. Okay. Can you please tell me a little bit about what I would like to refer to as the shark cull? Okay, uh, the government have uh, hired a, a contractor down the southwest to uh, target three major sharks and, and to kill those sharks. Okay. And then we do have fisheries uh, in the local area yep. doing the same thing. So okay. there are uh, drum lines set out of each coast area, one yep. kilometre offshore. Okay. And since they have been put out, how many sharks have been caught? Uh, as from a couple of weeks ago, mm. approximately 115 sharks. 115. And do you mm. know how many have been killed at that time? Around? 33 have been reported, reportedly killed. Okay, and that's directly from fisheries and the contractor down south? Yes, okay. and these are sharks that they've pulled up that are over three metres okay. and been shot. Sure, and then what about beyond that? Have they found some that have already been killed on the drum lines? Because I can imagine it's quite exhausting yeah. sitting on a drum line all day. Yeah, yeah. we can't. they can't go out and, and check the drum lines or they don't go out and check the drum lines 24 yeah. hours a day. So okay. usually in the mornings they find dead sharks and so far there's been 13 dead sharks found on the hooks. Okay. All undersized. Sure. And then, I mean, we talk about sharks a lot in West Australia. There's a, we've got a very uh, public culture who love to get in the ocean and we say that there's a lot of sharks in WA. Do we have an unusual amount of sharks in this marine park, do you think? It's not an unusual. We're, we're, um, we're blessed with the Lewin Current, which, um, as we have cold water off our coast, the Lewin Current brings a beautiful warm water current sure. down. Yeah. And that also allows uh, sharks from the north to come and migrate down south to yeah. us. Okay. And it also allows uh, great white sharks to follow their migration patterns along. But it also that also allows them to come and rest and have rest areas when they need to and feed Sure. Uh, because of the abundance of our sure. marine we life. We have something special going on here. We do, but yeah. it's not hugely unusual. There are yeah. um, many places in the world that sure. are similar. So that's South, San Fran and South Africa South and stuff Africa. like that. Yep. And then on a, on a global scale, how many sharks do you think are killed by people every year? Uh, approximately 100 million sharks are killed every year. 100 million. Yeah, right. And that's through uh, that's through the illegal shark finning, finning. as yep. well as legal shark fisheries and now us. Okay. So can I just say that sharks, for me, I immediately don't want to cuddle and save a shark. Why should we care about a predator that is killing people? Well, these sharks are apex predators. Okay. And if you take an apex predator out of the environment, then yep. it's just going to... Uh, it's going to change the whole the whole ecosystem sure. uh, there. The food chain's just going to get messed up. And, yep. you know, you take out these apex predators, this allows other species to increase. Okay. And what happens if those, uh, if those, um, those fish increase to a point where they're out of control yep. and they could go through and wipe out other species? Sure. So it's a balance it's, of the ecosystem. It's a yep. whole chain of effects. Sure. Yeah. And so what are marine experts saying about this? Oh, everyone is up in arms about it. Okay. Worldwide, yep. Yep. Um, marine experts have been in touch with Colin Barnett's office yep. saying that this is not a good idea, that we can't keep this up. Sure, okay. And then a lot of people um, are saying people before sharks. And as an environmentalist, I would hate to think I need to make a choice of loving people or an animal more. What would you say to this comment? Well, it's definitely, uh, it's, we're, not def we're not putting sharks before people. We're yeah. definitely putting people before sharks. Yeah. That's why we're coming out with some education programs and some other strategies. Sure. So many more things that we can do to keep people safe yeah. rather than killing Kill the, the sharks. sharks. So what other options are there rather than the yeah. shark cull? Yeah. We're looking at putting in um, a program, a shark spotters program. Sure. It's proven very successful in South Africa for the last nine years. Okay. Yep. So we're looking at doing that. Uh, yep. That's going to be fabulous down south. Yep. It's not appropriate for the Perth coastline, but it okay. is for the southwest. Sure. 
Okay. Uh, and then education boards and just teaching the public about the movement of sharks and yep. the behaviour of sharks. Sure. So it sounds like there needs to be a lot more research and, and people understanding what, what's happening more so than yep. just going out and killing. Okay. Absolutely. So I can imagine there's so much information here that needs to be spoken about. If people would like more information about um, sharks or, the, um, or about what you guys are doing, where do you think they can head to? Uh, well, everyone's on social media, so our Facebook page on, uh, well, there is a Facebook page called No Shark Cull, yep. uh, and if people go on there, then they can find the right avenue that they want to go down, and they can contact any of us there. Great. Okay, that sounds good. Thank you very much for coming on the show You're today, welcome. Donna. And if you would like more information, head to the Couch website, thecouch.com.au, and we'll have a link there. You can find out more information and get in touch with Donna on the link as well. Thank you so much for having us, Fred. Thank you very much. And it is a controversial topic because, I mean, I, I wanted to ask Donna, I know she'd be having a, a lot of time, but does Colin Bennett look like he's softening? Because I've seen him sort of say this is not a long-term policy, we may change in a couple of years. So it, does it look like the pressure may be getting to him, he may change his mind? The pressure is definitely getting to him, uh, but he has had a couple of opportunities to change his mind. But I think he's made a decision and he's going to stick with Why that. Why do you think he's so stubborn? Because there's so, obviously so many ways of doing this. There's other alternative ways. Mm. Why isn't he taking the advice? I think he needed to... He wanted to look like he was doing something and doing something The pressure from immediately. the public, maybe? Um, but he didn't, he didn't listen to his advisers. He didn't listen to the researchers and the experts out there. And now mm. it's just turned right around on him and he's... Well, let's hope he has a good. rethink before the next election. Thank you very much, guys, for being in today. It's certainly a topic which has got a lot of people talking. It's not something we want to see happen. And, and like, like Cara said, the, uh, the ocean is, is the shark's natural home, and we're going into that ocean. I would like to see more people maybe think before they go into the ocean they may be eaten by a shark and maybe not swim there and go into the pool. I don't, but you never know. All right, let's uh, tell you how to contact the couch. If you want more information about anything Cara's spoken about today or anything else you've seen on the show, this is how you do it. If you're looking for more info on anything you've seen on today's show, head to thecouch.com.au. It's where you'll find all the links for our guests, plus clips from the show, backstage photos, and even exclusive movie reviews. You can also sign up as a couchie and be part of our competitions, including Spin It to Win It. New Zealand viewers, that's open to you too. So jump online and check it out now. thecouch.com.au and we'd love to hear from you about anything that's on your mind. Maybe you've got a story or two that you'd like to throw at us or maybe you're a performer and you'd like to come and perform on the show, just like this next performer. Her name is Karama. We thought we'd take a little bit of a break and I thought I'd do this for Kara because I know how much she loves belly dancing. Let's check out this next act and then we're going to talk to Alfredo from Café Bella Vista.
Don't know if I can do that, but very flexible. I'll try that. Thank you, Karima. It's nice to have you on the show, and we'll have you back again very, very soon. Now it's time to talk about the other passion in my life, and that's food. And if you want good food, you can only go to one place, and that's Cafe Bella Vista. The man making sure we have the best food is this man, Alfredo. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Alfredo, tell everybody about your role at uh, Cafe Bella Vista. Uh, well, I'm uh, the manager. Uh, I've been at Cafe Bella Vista for seven years. And uh, um, me and together with my team, uh, we build up, uh, you know, uh, a, a good restaurant. So we put together, uh, I think, the best ingredients to make a restaurant successful. When you say that, what makes the great ingredient? What, what ingredients do you need uh, to have a good restaurant successful? Okay, okay. Uh, from my experience, what I learned to make a good restaurant is uh, have a good team, have a good staff. That is the key. So I want to thank also all my staff. And uh, a good quality of food. And of course, uh, is the ambience uh, of uh, the restaurant. So uh, talking about the ambience also, we just finished uh, uh, our renovation. Yes, I was down there. I had my birthday down there a few months ago, but you've done more renovations since I've been down yes, there. Yes, yes. It's incredibly nice. We're looking at some photos now, and I came down there and had a look with you. Tell me where it's located. Uh, the restaurant is located in East Perth, uh, just opposite to Wellington Park on Bennett Street. Uh, it's, uh, just, uh, it's very vibrant, isn't it? Because I noticed your restaurant has a lot of um, red and white in it. Yes. Was yes, that yeah. purposely done? Yeah, yeah, this is purposely done. Uh, it's kind of also attract, uh, give, uh, attract the attention of the people when they walk in, and I think give a good uh, balance in the restaurant. So what are some of the, um, the changes you've made? You've made it a bigger restaurant? Because I know you've, you've got a bit of a stage now at the back. Uh, yes, yes. We made, the, like, uh, we, ex we expand the, uh, the restaurant. Uh, so we add some seat in the restaurant. And uh, at the same time, we also uh, renovate our kitchen. We uh, made an open kitchen, so everyone coming in the restaurant can That's see right, our chef the fish tank. operating. Yes, yeah. It's, I always think a restaurant's very good if you're willing for people to see inside your kitchen. Yeah. And I, and I think it's very important because so many people now like to see what if it's clean, and it is very clean. Yeah. Now, do you have? A, I know you've got some uh, cabaret and some acts coming up as well. Uh, yeah, something is coming up soon. Uh, we were just waiting to finish uh, all our renovation, and uh, probably uh, for the beginning of winter, we're gonna uh, organize some cabaret night. Now, I'm having a look. You've got a function room as well for those people who want a little bit of privacy. Uh, yes. We yes. Saw, and there's you, of course, looking handsome there. <laughs> Uh, yeah, basically, Tell me about the function room. Yeah, the function room is just attached to the restaurant, but is a separate room. Uh, can be higher that for private function, uh, for birthday, for How any occasion. How many people can fit in? We can fit uh, a seated uh, dinner. We can have uh, up to 45 people. That's quite if good. If it's like a cocktail party, even up to 60 people. Now, the type of things you have, birthdays, cocktail parties, holy communions, Communion, engagements maybe. Engagement as well. Anything. And we had also some small wedding in the restaurant, yeah. Do you do... Um, do you do functions as well for work? Yeah, yeah, especially, you know, like uh, um, we do a lot of uh, uh, November, December for Christmas function, for work function, but the restaurant, you know, is open every day of the year. Now, so. One thing I absolutely love is your new menu. Thank you. What made you make a new one up? Uh, you know, we realized that uh, in restaurant oh, also you, 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 need, you need change, so... You've got a lot we, there. You've got all different pages there. There's a, Fantastic, yeah. man. I won't go through each one, but one thing I absolutely adore is you've got a specials night, haven't you? Yes. Is that Tuesday? Monday and Tuesday night. Monday and Tuesday. So two nights in the week. So we why have... should I come down Monday and Tuesday apart from saving a lot of money? Uh, you know, you get the same quality of food, the same size for pasta and pizza and parmigiana for a cheaper price. Do you know what I like? I like the parmigiana. Yeah. And I like your servings because a lot of restaurants, when they make it cheaper, Usually they reduce the size. No, we try to keep the same size just for a cheaper price, you know. And they do because I've been there and I know the pasta is incredibly, very good, good serve. The parmigiana, incredible. Thank you. And, and where you're located, there's plenty of parking as well. There's plenty of parking uh, uh, off the street and uh, especially be uh, a night is plenty, it's free of charge. So Fantastic. Now what are your opening hours? Uh, opening, uh, we open every night of the year except for the 26th of December, and then we open for lunch uh, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday, and breakfast every day. And where are you located again? In East Perth on Bennett Street. Now, if you're like me, and maybe you want to eat a little bit too much and you want to stay the night, there's Bailey's Hotel there as well, so you can get a great room because they're attached to the same Yeah, and the, the better deal, yeah, Beautiful. because you're coming to the restaurant. So. Now, can you recommend something, because uh, being Sunday night, maybe I want to come tomorrow night, what would you recommend I try? Because I've tried the paella. 
Yep. I've tried the parmigiana. Yep. I've had the ravioli and I've had the gnocchi. Anything else? Uh, as you can see also from my menu, my recommendation in the main course go for our lamb rack, which is uh, sensational. And that is uh, something that I can really, really recommend. And I know you make pizza as well. I see and the pizza uh, oven. Yes, yes. We got uh, a gas fire, but we put the pizza on the stone. So the pizza becomes uh, nice, crunchy and... Uh, and I've just noticed you're also licensed. Yes, fully so licensed. There's alcohol there if people want it. Yep. At the same time, we allow BYO wine only. I love it. Yeah. Cafe Bella Vista. Check out the website, which is? www.cafebellavista.com.au Say it again. Woo woo. <laughs> I like that. Say it again. Uh, uh, v v v v no, I like it. I love the accent. <laughs> Cafebellavista.com. We don't want to lose the woo woo because I think that's good. Thank you very much, Alfredo. You do a wonderful job. I look Thank forward you. to working with you Thank this year. Thank you very Please much. Please check out Cafe Bella Vista. They've got an amazing menu, which I've got here, and I'm going to try out everything because I have to, for the show's sake. I need to try every single menu, every single dish. So look forward to me being there, opening hours, Pleasure. And, and I'll probably be there until the next day. Thank you very much for being on the show. Thank Alfredo. Everybody, give him a round of applause to our guest today. You can all clap. There you go. There you go, Alfredo. Looking forward to being at Cafe Bella Vista. We'll take a break and be back with Spin It to Win It next. <laughs>